It's a beautiful spring day. What do you say we eat our lunch in Central Park? Sure thing. Yes, sir, you seem more energetic than usual. If that's possible, what's up? You know our neighbor, Alex Rosen, the lawyer who we see on the Long Island Railroad every day? He has some very large clients who are looking for a new ad agency. I showed them some of our work, and they've tentatively agreed to our working with them as an independent agency. I've also been talking to the other friends, and I think I could line up a bunch of good clients and we could go out on our own. Yeah, we've been talking about this for a while. I have to know a lot more details. Yes, so you know my position. We've got steady, reliable jobs now. As you know, I'm not a big risk taker, and I like to be really careful before I make changes, especially big changes like this. You're smart enough to know where I'm going with this. We combine this with another dream. We can move to Israel and work from our own office near our homes. Yeah, see, we've known each other almost all our lives. I know in your mind that's the next step. And you know very well that I don't like to make radical moves without looking at every angle. I'm not a risk taker. I insist on thinking things through very, very carefully until they're crystal clear. David, have I ever steered you wrong? Six years ago, when I married Esty, I introduced you to her best friend, Javi. And now... We've both got three beautiful kids, and we're earning big bucks, living in nice houses, and can support them in style. Yes, see, you're my best friend, but things are not always as simple as you paint them. We've got a good thing going here. It's just not my nature to bust it up for a dream. Look, you've given me a lot of good advice over the years, but who knows? Part of me would have preferred being a teacher in a religious school atmosphere rather than being in the advertising world where, frankly, I almost always feel pulled to cut corners in terms of honesty. In the life I left behind, I might have had less money, but the work would have been felt a lot cleaner. But David, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. You know as well as I do that sometimes you think too much, think too deeply. In yeshiva, you were the brain. You've gone through the Talmud three times with umpteen commentaries. But this could be a dream come true within our grasp. Hours for the taking. And we can make it into a reality. It's just a matter of dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Okay, let's say we jump and grab and live the dream as you're suggesting. And what happens if the dream then falls apart? What if there's a recession and the work dries up? And we can't find jobs that are as good there. And we have to unravel things and move back to the U.S. and find new jobs. Or let's say our kids don't adjust. Or what if they love Israel and don't want to move back? And we can only find jobs in the U.S. And we have to start commuting to Israel on weekends. I don't think I could take that stress. But David, just think. If we play our cards right, we can move with our families to Israel, work from our own office. For thousands of years, Jews have been wandering the globe. And now we could join half of the Jewish people who have already returned to our Holy Land. And we could be part of that and still live very comfortably. Look, all my brothers and sisters and their families live in the U.S. And both of our parents are getting on in years and they all live near us in Woodmere. And my three kids, they're happy here where they are. David, sometimes things that sparkle on the outside also sparkle on the inside. If I could get a bunch of definite clients... You've got to at least consider it. We have our style of working together. In every project that we get, I see the big picture and get the ball rolling, and then you put your thinking cap on and come up with the most brilliant, creative stuff that knocks everybody's socks off. Let's make this another one of those projects. I'm excited. I see the dream. Go ahead and look into it deeply and see to it that all the pieces fit together. This is a big opportunity to live a dream that the Jewish people have had for 2,000 years. Oh, Yossi, you're a great salesman as usual. Okay, I won't dismiss it out of hand. Do your homework and look into getting some clients. Look, I've discussed this often with Javi, and neither of us are in favor of jumping. When you think you've got some ducks lined up, then why don't you and Esty come over after Shabbos, and we'll all talk it over. We'll talk about the Holy Land after the Holy Day of Shabbos.
Chava. Oh, it's great to see you again. I think it's been over two months. I love what you've done with the living room. We just got our regular babysitter and our kids are asleep. So we'll have uh, plenty of time to talk. It's not like the old days. Remember when we were basically inseparable, practically living in each other's houses? But family life is nonstop, barely giving us time to breathe or sleep. We really should get together for coffee every week. Well, if it's okay, I'm going to start the ball rolling. First of all, thanks for being open-minded about this potentially incredible life-altering move for all of us. I've lined up three ad accounts that say they are eager for us to do their ad work. They're hot to trot, and I must say, mainly because of David's creative genius. They're all ready from day one, and we'd be making a lot more money than we're making now. Second, I've been talking to our friends who live in Ramat Beit Shemesh, a great Anglo community in Israel. They recommended real estate agents who say there are great places we can rent or buy. They're not cheap, but the prices here have also gone up, and we could probably sell our houses for a bundle and make the move quite easily. And third, all our kids are under six. They'll learn Hebrew easily, and there are good schools they could go to. So that's my homework. I just want to say I'm on board with this decision. We've been talking about moving to Israel for so long, since we got married. And this is a golden opportunity we cannot miss. We know so many families who made the move. Their families seem very well adjusted. So this is just the time. I agree with Jesse here. You know, I don't like putting water on the fire, but David and I have spent a lot of time talking about this. And we're not as gung-ho as the both of you. We're not discounting it, but we both feel a lot more cautious about it. Jumping jobs and jumping continents seems a bit much all in one fell swoop. Look, we know Yussi is a terrific salesman. He could sell anyone the Brooklyn Bridge. But this is our lives, our future, our families, almost all of our relatives, especially our parents, who are not getting any younger, are here in America. David and I feel we should be cautious and tread lightly. Oh, yes, so your enthusiasm is one of your great qualities. But as Hava says, this is a major move. There's something called the unknown, the unpredictable, the unexpected. This is a lot to change in the blink of an eye. So I'm going to make a suggestion. It's now May. How about we try it for three months? We'll take a leave of absence from our job, do work for the companies you've got lined up on a trial basis, and live and work in Israel for a few months. We'll try this one step at a time and see how it works. What do you say? I'm excited. Okay, let's get ready for our three-month work vacation pilot trip in Israel. From the time that Avram heard the call Till now when we gather at the hall it's been a land that's for us all Our hearts are in Israel Moshe saw it from far away Where David wrote the Psalms we pray We thank Hashem for it every day our hearts are in Israel. Kadusha shines from every stone. It's where we never feel alone. The land we've always called our home. Our hearts are in Israel. Where the temple stood in its glory Its earth tells of our history Where we return to our family Our hearts are in Israel This is the first time we've met since we arrived, and the kids are all in camp. David, what's up? Why did you call this get-together? Yesterday in the office, you didn't look good at all. Did he catch a flu or something? Having extended jet lag? In all our years, I've never seen you look so bedraggled. Yes, David is up half the night talking in his sleep. 
He's just not been his regular self since we arrived. He didn't want to talk about it until we all got together. Actually, I'm really concerned. David, what is going on? Since I've gotten here, I haven't slept well. There's something really weird that's been disturbing my sleep. It happened the first night, and it happened again last night. I don't know how to say this, but there's a voice talking to me at night. Maybe you're just worried about this transition. It's a big change, and maybe you're just feeling very concerned about the changes that can happen down the road. No, I'm pretty sure that it's not that at all. This is all extremely strange, and I didn't want to talk about it at all until we were all together as a kind of reality check. Well, here goes. I feel that Hashem, God, is talking to me at night. He keeps repeating that He wants us to use our marketing skills to talk to Jews and non-Jews, to tell them a message that He repeats over and over. Oh, David, it must be a combination of jet lag and your deep mind concerned about complications that can happen. That's what I thought after the first night, but exactly the same thing happened the second night. But here is what came with the night talking that convinced me that it's not just jet lag. The voice told me that he is giving me some powers to show that this is coming from a real place. First, Exhibition 1. I don't think you'll be more amazed than I was. I'm putting a pitcher of water on the table. Let the water split. My goodness, it's like splitting the Red Sea. And now Exhibition 2, let the water rise. Now the third trick is still a mystery to me. The voice tells me a five-digit number. I don't have any idea what it means. Here's the number the voice told me the first night, and here's the number I was told last night. The numbers are similar, and I have no idea what they mean. You guys won't believe this. The first number is the exact close of the Dow Jones Industrial Average yesterday. I bet the second number is how the stock market is going to close today. So, what do you all make of this? I can't believe it. Are you a prophet? I married a prophet? A Navi? Wow. Oh my. I cannot believe this is happening. This is insane. What is going on? This is amazing. I can't believe it. It's said that when the Jews come back to their homeland, that prophecy will return. But I haven't heard of that happening yet. And it happened to you, the first day. My best friend and business partner is a prophet, a Navi. This is off the charts. But in all honesty, you've always had the deepest mind I've ever known. I guess Hashem, the Almighty, has selected you for a mission. And he's given you some abilities to reduce other people's skepticism. I find this hard to process. It's just too far out. What do I do now? David, this isn't too hard to figure out. You, we, we, we have to listen to this voice. Tell us more about what the voice is saying. Maybe we should go to a rabbi and get some guidance. This isn't something we're familiar with. There's a very well-known rabbi in Yerushalayim who we've all heard about, Rabbi Yosef Shimon. He's an enormous Torah scholar, and his yeshiva also learns Kabbalah and mysticism. I think before we do anything, we should talk to him. I'll find out how to contact him. David, what do you say we go to talk to Rabbi Shimon about this? Great idea. I'm in. Sounds good to me. Welcome to Israel. Baruch HaMabayim. My assistant says that you just arrived from Woodmere, Long Island. Actually, this is really just a pilot trip. We're checking things out to make sure if it's the right choice for us and our families in terms of work and all the other factors. May Hashem help you with your decision. So how can I help you? Rabbi Shimon, we've only been here three days. In bed each night, I hear a voice talking to me in my sleep. The voice says that he is Hashem talking. Yossi and I work in advertising, and the voice says that we should devote a percentage of our time sending out a message to Jews and non-Jews about what Hashem wants us to do. That's interesting. So you want to know if you should take the voice seriously and take some time out from your work schedule to do that? Well, it's a little more complicated and interesting. It seems that David has been given some powers to give his message more credibility. Powers? Allow me to demonstrate. Can we ask your assistant to bring out three glasses of water? Pretty impressive. That's not all. Each night, David is told a five-digit number. Here are the numbers I've been told each night, and it turns out that at the end of the next day, we see that this is the exact number of the close of the Dow Jones Industrial Average on the New York Stock Exchange. 
Actually, I'm not all that surprised. Our sages have said that as Jews come back to Israel, that perhaps Navua prophecy will begin again. We, of course, have a tradition that Navua only can take place in Israel, and I've always suspected, even expected, that at one point, as more Jews arrive and live here, that this will happen. Well, Mazel Tov, it seems possible, maybe likely, that Hashem has chosen you to have these powers. So what's the question? Well, what do we do now? Listen to the voice. As long as he tells you to do things within Jewish law, use your advertising skills to spread the word. Why not? How much time does he tell you to spend on this endeavor? Well, actually, I haven't asked him directly. Well, ask him and see what he says. The general rule of thumb is to spend 10% of your time on such activity. Could you do that and have that not affect your business? I think so, if Hashem is helping us without a doubt. Well, may Hashem help you in this endeavor. I must admit, I've been expecting something like this for quite a while, and now it's happened. I suppose it's another sign that we're getting closer to the redemption. You can call me at any time to ask me questions about your holy endeavor. Here is my private number. Wow, good luck. I'll be interested to see what you come up with and to see what reaction it has in your audience. Can we show the world the powers that David has? Why not? The powers were given to lend credibility to the message. So, I would say yes. Yes, see, I don't know how to say this. I have mixed feelings about this whole thing. You know me, I'm pretty cautious and private. I've never really been comfortable being out there. You like the spotlight, I don't. Well, I don't see how I can do this and stay in my comfort zone. First of all, I don't know where this is going to lead. How are people going to react? It's all kind of weird. And I'll be in the public eye. How can I avoid that? These are my ideas for the insurance account. Great. Beautiful. They'll love it. That's been the formula for our creative relationship. I get the ball rolling, and you use your depth and creativity to execute it flawlessly. And here's some content for the website in response to my dreams. And this shows the glasses of water. Hopefully it will lend credibility to the site's meaningful content. How about the nightly five-digit numbers? We can call the number into a bank that puts it in their vault. And each day we'll make a remote video of them taking out the previous day's number and reading it. Looks great. And we can use the same metrics technology that we use to track the audience clicks and how long they stay on the sites and videos. By the way, this Wednesday is Shavuos. I assume we'll learn all night, as we usually do on Shavuos? Yes, Shavuos, to commemorate that the Jewish people got the Torah at Mount Sinai seven weeks after we left Egypt. Of course, like every year, we'll learn all night until the break of dawn. Oh, we got out of Egypt seven weeks ago. Hashem let him have it, it was quite a show Got a little frightened when we got to the sea it Split down the middle and now we're free Moshe going up and we're gonna get the Torah tonight uh -huh. Oh, the women started singing a song to Hashem Thanking that we'd never be slaves again We've been living on manna coming out of the sky After 49 days we got the heart Sinai Moshe going up and we're gonna get the Torah tonight Oh, oh. oh the Torah's gonna tell us how to live every day Showing us a path and what to do and say It was so hard for hundreds of years Hashem said free so we can be His Moshe going up and we're gonna get the Torah tonight Oh, oh. oh we're gonna get the Torah tonight Yes, we're gonna get the Torah tonight Yes, we're gonna get the Torah tonight Yes, we're gonna get the Torah tonight Whoa, Moshe going up and we're gonna get the Torah tonight We're about a week into our new website and videos for our new project 
Let's sit at my computer and review the stats, metrics, and traffic. I also had the Barrel Agency do a summary of the talkbacks and reactions, and do a survey of the non-internet reactions. But look at the Barrel report. It's a little surprising. They divide their reactions into several demographic groups, broken down by country and religious level. This demographic analysis shows that the traffic is building both for Jews and non-Jews, both religious and non-religious. Look at this analysis of the talkbacks. Though we've tried to keep the religious message mild, these groups have had a somewhat negative reaction, implying that perhaps we're suggesting that they should change. I guess they feel pushed into beliefs and lifestyle that they feel are alien to their own. I must say that this is the most challenging advertising job we've ever worked on. Put on your thinking cap and use these results to come up with more content. Goodness, we're just a little over a week into the campaign. Is this the office of David Kahn and Yossi Stein? Let's see who's at the door. Don't resist, and everyone will be all right. Both of you, we're putting masks over your heads. Come downstairs into the backseat of the car, slowly. The door is firmly locked. What is this all about? You both will be all right. We'll give you kosher meals three times a day. We provided you with tefillin, prayer books, and books of the Talmud that you could learn together. What do you want from us? We just want you to tell us those five numbers every day. I can't believe it. They want your inside information about the stock market. They'll use it to make money. This is totally crazy. Well, David, dream well at night. And I hope those numbers keep coming in for our safety. I must say, I don't know how much of a Navi prophet I am. I certainly didn't see this coming. Well, it looks like we may be here for a little while. We should make ourselves comfortable. Chava and Esti and our families will be so worried. I'm sure there will be a manhunt, but I don't know the likelihood of anyone finding us. Boy, this is totally unexpected. I guess Navua prophecy is like a radioactive material. It can have unexpected and unpredictable results. We're certainly not wasting our time. The learning with you is as powerful and deep as ever. I can't believe it. It's Thursday already. It's been five days and soon we'll have to keep Shabbos here. Our families must be worried crazy. How long can this go on? This place must be totally out of the way. If you keep giving them the next day's stock market, they're happy making money hand over fist probably using stock futures. What would be their incentive for letting us go? Speaking of numbers, last night there was another number in my dream. A six-digit number. I wrote it down. Here it is. 863952. I have no idea what it could mean. That's weird. Now let me put on my thinking cap. The voice must be telling you this number for a reason. Your guess is as good as mine. Wait. The combination lock on the door that's keeping us locked inside. Since we've been held captive, I've been wondering if there's a way to figure out what the combination is. To let us out. What are those six numbers again? 863952. David's Navua. Prophecy strikes again. It's a backyard enclosed by a 12-foot high brick wall. See that metal bar on the ground? I have a hunch, a funny feeling. I'm picking up the metal bar. Yes, see? Grab the other end of the bar. Slicha, cell phone? Esti, call the police. We'll be waiting near Hakol Habayas Hardware Store on 115 Gula Street in Carmiel. We'll be waiting for them to arrive. Yes, we're both fine. They just wanted David's stock report numbers. We'll explain everything later. We'll be waiting for the police here. Yes, David's fine also. Please call Chava and let her know. What a weird and incredible experience that was. Especially how you engineered the unpredictable escape. Opening up the lock with those six numbers and flying over the trees to freedom? 
I guess being a Navi is more dangerous and adventurous than we expected. Thank goodness it comes along with extra abilities to get us out of unexpected and dicey situations. Yes, see, as I'm sure you can sense, things have gotten way out of my comfort zone. I guess I'm not much of a Navi if I can't even predict that we're going to be kidnapped. I like predictability, and things are getting a lot more unpredictable than I expected. Perhaps being a Navi stirs up strange cosmic forces that can't be predicted. You know that I'm by nature a private and cautious person. Pow, things seem to be happening from out of the blue, and I'm finding it difficult to maintain my sense of balance. Well, first of all, I think we can stop the stock market predictions. And the policemen said they're going to provide round-the-clock protection for us and our families. I don't think we have to worry about those kidnappers bothering us again. They got what they wanted to keep them happy. David, as I'm sure you're aware, we have to decide how to play what just happened. We've been using ads and content to draw attention to our web presence. The kidnapping and escape is amazing free publicity. We have to decide how to play it up. I know there are going to be throngs of reporters and film crews waiting for us when we arrive home. I don't want any part of it. Yes, see, our partnership has always been that you are out there, dealing with the public, and I've been in here, coming up with ways of expressing things. If you want to play this to the hilt with the public and the press, be my guest, but count me out. I'm remaining behind the scenes. This stuff really does ignite me. It's free publicity. I love mixing with the public and the press. On the other hand, I could see how it's thrown you for a loop. Yes, see, I've been following the instructions of the voice I hear to a T, and it hasn't mentioned anything about press conferences. Also, we can't forget our regular work, our ad accounts, and how that's supporting our families. David, don't worry. I'll handle the public side of things. You concentrate on the creative side. I can see how much this is throwing you off balance. I know how you love the spotlight in the public eye. I need to try to find my way back into a zone that feels quieter and safer. Oh, Chava, it's so incredible and wonderful to be back home with you and the kids. David, I don't think I slept much the entire five days you were gone. And I and the kids were so frightened and worried. I was constantly praying that you and Yossi were okay. Chava, while I was captive, my greatest concern was not for our own safety, but about the fear and worry that you and the kids and Yossi's family must have been going through. Nobody knew what happened to you. Nobody had any information about where you were. It was a total mystery. Didn't even want to think about the possibility of spending Shabbos without you. And I had to banish from my mind the slightest thought of being without you, of losing you. I somehow felt sure we'd get out okay, though I had no inkling about how. Oh, Chava, thank goodness we're back together again. You, me, and the kids, I'm so grateful and surrounded by the peace of Shabbos and the community. You know they're making a special kiddush tomorrow in honor of our escape. But I have to admit, David, that my mind doesn't feel settled yet. It's as though something is still out of place, off-center. I know what you mean, that the common, orderly feeling that we had not more than a month ago is disrupted, off-balance. Yes, and it seems that you're being pulled more into the public eye. And I know that that's not something you're comfortable with. I had a talk with Yossi about that coming back in the car. It seems increasingly difficult to keep our lives normal and less out there. One would think that serving Hashem in this way would make life easier, not harder. Of course I feel honored that Hashem wants me to be on this mission. How can I turn it down? But that doesn't make our lives simple. David, that relates to something else that puzzles me. A thought kept coming into my mind as I was praying for you. Is being a Navi a dangerous thing to do? I would have thought it would 
deepen your relationship with Hashem. And that should give an extra level of protection and not make things more dangerous. I've had the same thoughts. And it touches on something else that has me puzzled that I can't explain. I've been trying to keep the message of the website very simple about the ideas that I hear at night, about what the Almighty wants from us. Look, I've been formulating advertising messages for a long time, and it seems to be generating so much negativity, as if the message is so, so controversial. I've watched a lot of the web content that you've been making, and it seems pretty simple and obvious and common sense. The web and survey metrics say to some extent we're drawing in a larger audience and there's some good resonance there. But the negative reaction is also way up. There's a growing and strengthening voice against the message, full of anger and even rage, saying, don't tell us what to do, we're fine the way we are, as if the message is being coercive, pushing them. But you're only saying what Hashem is asking you to say. What could be wrong with that? That's the point. It's drawing in some people, but it seems to be pushing a lot of people out, having a very strong negative reaction. It's confusing me and making me very uncomfortable. But can I stop? Is that even an option? Maybe the message should be modified, adjusted, perhaps. That's something I'll talk about with Yossi and Rabbi Yosef Shimon, the rabbi we talked to in Yerushalayim. By the way, I got an email today from a friend that Esty and I went to high school with, Shana Kaufman. Her family moved to Israel, to Ranana, after high school. She heard that we are in Israel, and she's getting married next week, and we're all invited. It will be wonderful to see Shana Kaufman and her wonderful family again. I'm happy that she'll be starting a loving family of her own. Her parents tell her it'll be alright She goes back to sleep Cuddled by the people she loves Some years later on her wedding day A new man of it gives the ring and says Sure great to be here with all the people we love Uh-huh, Then come the babies, one, two, three Bouncing and gurgling on their knees It's not all easy but they had you see All their friends and family Oh things may come and things may go But one thing will never change we know We'll always need to be with people we love Oh we'll always need to be with people we love Uh Yes, we'll always need to be with people we love We sure have a lot of catching up to do for our ad clients. Of course they know what happened to us and fully understand but they have their goals and deadlines. Yes, I'm busy playing catch-up with the ads we're making for them. I've also been looking at the traffic for our website. The kidnapping and amazing escape made all the headlines and gave us more publicity than money can buy. I can see that the audience numbers and traction are way up, much of it positive, but there's also a lot of very vocal negativity. And yes, see, there's something else that's been on my mind that I was discussing with Chava. You would think that doing the Almighty's will would make our lives safer, not more dangerous, like our getting kidnapped and how it scared our families. Yes, I've been wondering about the same thing. It's got me perplexed also. David, I think we need to talk with Rabbi Shimon again. Maybe he'll have some insight into these issues. My thoughts exactly. Let me call Rabbi Shimon right now. Rabbi Shimon, please. Oh, Rabbi Shimon, I guess you heard about what happened to us. Yes, we're safe and sound and things are back to normal. David and I were wondering if you're available to meet again to see if you have some insight about what happened to us. Tomorrow afternoon at 2? Great. Thanks so much. See you then. I hear you've had quite an adventure since we last met. Yes, and it's raised issues and questions that we want to talk to you about. Sure. Go ahead. Basically, there are two questions. 
First, one would think that someone who Hashem is communicating with would benefit from that closeness and be safer. Yet what happens seems to have put us in greater danger and worried our families so much. Second, we've been trying to keep the messages on our website simple and mild. While we've been getting a lot of positive reaction, there's also a lot of very vocal negative reaction from people who feel that they're being coerced. David and Yassi, as you know, our yeshiva learns, in addition to the regular learning, Kabbalah, the mystical side of Judaism. Your questions relate to issues that we delve into. Hashem gives us all free will, our ability to choose between the positive and negative forces in the world. To maintain free will, when there is an increase in good forces in the world, bad forces also increase to keep a balance. We're talking about forces that are mystical, powerful, and elemental with great potential to build and to destroy. I'm sure you know the Talmud and Chagiga that describes how four great rabbis went deep into the mystical realm. As you know, as a result of their journey, one went crazy, one died, and one lost his faith. And only Rabbi Kiva came out whole. This mystical realm is powerful and unpredictable. David, when you demonstrated your abilities, I felt that it's a sign that Hashem is ready for the Jewish people to rise to a higher level. In terms of the balance of free will, this has the potential for us to attain greater heights, but it can also increase the negative forces with great danger. Our free will requires that when positive forces increase, such as Navua and special abilities, this has to be balanced by an increased potential for negative forces in the world. That's just the necessary formula for free will to feel an equal pull on both the plus and the minus directions. We must do what we can to influence these forces for good, but we must also be vigilant and prepared to deal with an increase of negativity. We must meet this challenge with courage and intelligence. The second temple was destroyed almost 2,000 years ago, and the Jewish people were exiled from our land and wandered the globe. Thankfully, we are now returning to our homeland, and half of the Jews already live here. In this long struggle, we've kept our laws strong, and we've been resilient in our faith. Now is especially a time for renewed strength and hope. David and Yassi, I'm here to assist you to the best of my abilities. Call me any time, day or night. David, I know that you like to avoid the spotlight, but going forward, I don't think that will be possible because your message must be public. We must find within ourselves strength and confidence. I will try to help you as much as I can. Also, when we go through stressful situations, it's important to keep in mind that we should always be profoundly grateful to Hashem for our wondrous life, family, and friends that He bestows on us. When things are tense, we should breathe deeply and remember to appreciate all that He gives us, all that we have. Rabbi Shimon, thank you. It's so important to us that you're helping us in this amazing and challenging adventure. Rabbi Shimon is a great rabbi. We are fortunate to have his guidance. We can certainly resonate with all that he said, including his last point, to be tremendously grateful for all of Hashem's wondrous gifts, and when times are challenging, to take things in stride. Oh, when the money stops, the bills are over the top With payments starting to slide Don't be worried, you got to take it in stride uh -huh. When the turns you take turn out to be a mistake You're on a wild goose ride don't be angry, you got to take it in stride uh -huh, uh -huh. You can always find the needed peace of mind You got whatever you need And when life has the nerve to throw you a curve You know you're gonna make it, yes indeed When all the troubles are popping like bubbles 
Don't let it get you inside Worry hurts you You got to take it in stride uh -huh. Oh yes you can do it You got to take it in stride David Kahn, thanks so much for letting us talk to you. It's my pleasure. You've certainly become quite a celebrity in just a few weeks. Talk has it that you're a Navi, the Hebrew word for prophet. Is that actually true? Well, about four weeks ago, right after I and my advertising partner Yossi and our families came for the stay in Israel, these things started happening to me at night. What kind of things? I had a feeling I could do certain things that I had never been able to do before. For example? I found I could split a glass of water and make it levitate off the ground. That must have come as quite a surprise. It sure was. Anything else? Well, I could see the numbers of the stock market close the day before it happened. I heard that got you into trouble. Well, yes. Some people kidnapped me and Yossi and wanted to hear the numbers straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak. I heard you had a daring escape. That's captured quite a bit of attention. Yes, the number of the door lock combination just came to me, and I and Yossi were able to fly to safety to the next town. Can you demonstrate live for our audience on camera what you do with a glass of water? Sure. Oh! I must say that's pretty amazing. So what do you make of all this? Thank goodness we've had the guidance of a wonderful rabbi, Rabbi Yosef Shimon whose yeshiva in Jerusalem studies, among other things, the mystical side of Judaism. When we spoke to him, he gave us the confidence that these abilities are coming from above. So what have you done as a result? Well, as you know, my partner and I are involved with advertising. The voice in my dreams say that we should spend a part of our day on a website that talks about what Hashem, that's another name for God, is telling me in the dreams. For example? Well, the message is really pretty simple, and I've been trying to use my experience in advertising to make the message clear. It's just about what Hashem wants from us. So what has been the reaction? There's a large positive response. We can see from the metrics that it's found a pretty good resonance with the public, but there's also a strong negative reaction. But Rabbi Shimon says that that is to be expected, and we shouldn't let that interfere with our website and message. Well, I must say that in all my years of interviewing, this is one of the most intriguing and interesting stories I've covered. I wish you the best of luck going forward. Thank you. David, I wish you and your partner and your family success in your adventure. Thank you. We wish you the best also. It's been wonderful talking to you. Thank you. Likewise. I suggested that we get here several hours early because it might be hard to find parking later if there are as many people showing up as I hope. Also, you need time to prepare yourself psychologically. This will be your most public event so far. I think I'm ready to split the water in the Tel Aviv Harbor. I sent out a press release to all the major Israel, American, and other networks and newspapers. The coverage could get us into the next tier of the public eye. Is this the stand that you were talking about? It sure is. The idea is that you'll be standing on this and you do your thing. Are you pretty sure you could do this? If Hashem is with me, I think so. And I'd hate to disappoint the crowds. Yes, let's take a break and walk around the boardwalk with our families. This is the first time we've been to Tel Aviv. It's beautiful here. The view of the Mediterranean, the breeze. You called the event for 6 p.m.? You got it. Let's meet back here at around 5.30. David, are you all set? I think you could start going up the ladder to the platform and relax and prepare yourself. That was truly amazing. The worldwide coverage should be off the charts. David, you outdid yourself. I'm sure glad that it came off without a hitch. See you back home. The reaction was even greater than I thought, in the millions, worldwide. Look at these pictures. Look at these headlines. David, you're a celebrity. It's hard for me to digest. What's it done for the website? The traffic is off the charts. Beyond belief. The message is now being heard by a good percentage of people online. Hashem must be very pleased. I must say that it's not that comfortable for me to be so much in the public eye, but I'm following Rabbi Shimon's advice. Yes, see, I have an idea. Why don't we take tomorrow off? 
Let's wake up early, get babysitters for the kids, and go with our wives to the Kotel, and pray at dawn, at the Kotel, the western wall of where the Holy Temple stood, the holiest place in the world. And we know that dawn, the break of day, is when Hashem is especially attentive to our prayers. We'll do some heavy praying at the Kotel at the break of day. The night is upon us, it feels intense We're looking up and searching the skies Oh, how we look deep inside about all we need As the sun is beginning to rise Oh, the sun is rising We're praying at the break of day uh -huh. Our soul's calling out and we're full of hope As the day is going to start Oh, we're reaching out and we hope we're heard With all the feelings we have in our heart Oh, the sun is rising, we're praying at the break of day. Uh -huh. ba -do -ba 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 -do ba do ba ba do ba do ba 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 do ba do ba 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 do 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 ba do ba ba do ba ba do ba ba do ba Feel the connection, it feels so real About all that we're trying to say Oh please hear our voices, we're calling now Oh yes, at the start of the day Oh the sun is rising, we're praying at the break of day uh -huh. The praying here, especially at dawn, is so intense. You can feel heaven's ear listening to every word. I kept thinking about how just above us on the Temple Mount stood the holy first and second temples, each for over 400 years before the second temple was destroyed almost 2,000 years ago. But we know that part of the holiness has remained. It's so tangible. I'm sure Esti and Chava experienced the same thing in the women's section. Now that our morning prayers are done, let's meet our wives at the Kotel Plaza. Wait, I hear a commotion up there on the Temple Mount. I just heard from someone that there's fighting happening on the Temple Mount. Aren't you David Kahn, the first person to split water since Moses? What do you say about this? Some people say that your Nevoah prophecy has led people to hope that the third temple will be rebuilt soon. This would have unpredictable consequences for what's on the Temple Mount now. What do you say about the commotion going on up there now? I've just been talking peace. If other people use what I'm saying to stir up trouble, I don't think there's much I can do about that. Actually, I have an idea. Perhaps if I flew above the Temple Mount, it'll distract them enough to calm down the commotion there. This is incredible. David Khan, also known as the Navi, the prophet, is responding to the commotion on the Temple Mount by lifting himself up in the air and flying over the Temple Mount. I can see on my other monitor that the people on the Temple Mount are quieting down, mesmerized by David flying above them. Yes, the commotion is quieting down. The people have stopped fighting. David is now flying down to the Kotel Plaza where I'm reporting from. He's rejoining his friend and their wives. Now they're calmly walking away. This is incredible, unbelievable. I've never seen anything like this. Yes, I think you should hear this. I'll put the phone on speaker. I'm repeating this again. David Kahn, you have to stop what you are doing. It's causing too much commotion, too much tension, too much everything. 
We represent powerful interests and we mean business. We're telling you in no uncertain terms, close down your website. Stop with the miracles. Stop. I hope I'm making myself clear. We aren't fooling around. We mean business. I think we better call Rabbi Shimon. Yes, thanks, Rabbi Shimon. I guess you've heard about the Tel Aviv port event and about what happened at the Kotel and Temple Mount. But something just happened that we have to tell you about. We just got a phone call from someone we don't know who. He says that he represents powerful interests. And he said in no uncertain terms that we have to stop. Yes, close down the website, stop everything. What do you say to that? I'm hearing from a lot of people that there's a great positive reaction, a waking up. How could we get just stop? This must be pleasing Hashem tremendously. Remember what I said? This is bound to stir up all kinds of forces, powerful, unpredictable forces. But we must continue. It's having such a positive effect. I can hear my students talking about it. The prophets of old stood up to negative reactions, and we must do the same. Maintain your course. Yossi, I just got a call from Rabbi Shimon's yeshiva. Some men would mass burst into the yeshiva and forced Rabbi Shimon into a car. The yeshiva called the police and there's a massive manhunt. This all happened only 10 minutes ago. Come on, let's go. I'm going to try to use my powers to help find Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon, we've all been praying for you. How are you feeling? Weak, but fine. We can see that mystical forces in reaction to a call to a higher level are very strong, both positive and negative. Perhaps it would be best if we lay low for a while. The temple's destruction and the exile happened almost 2,000 years ago. We don't have to change things overnight. We must be persistent, but patient. 